Hello, so here we are today with this 1 to 35 scale model of a mechanical female soldier. This is a garage kit which I ordered from China quite a while back now. I think this video was, most of this video was filmed last Christmas. So when he just got around to compiling this video. So anyway, we've unpacked the bits and pieces. And there you can see we've got all our model pieces ready to assemble. So this kit doesn't come with any instructions. So you've got to make it up as you go along. So hopefully this video will help some people out if they decide to buy this model. So first off, I'm just uh, getting the pieces together and using a file to file off any edges and flashing and just to see where we're at so I've got I've actually got a photo of the uh, model to kind of give us an idea of where the pieces go so my uh, plan of attack was to get the obvious pieces stuck together and kind of work out the model in a process of elimination type of scenario. So I started on the main body there. So still filing down the pieces, just making sure everything's clean and ready to glue in place. And so we got the main body there. And use any kind of tools to clean up your pieces. I got a pe uh, some wire cutters there to get off some bulky areas and a craft knife just to scrape away a few areas of flashing kind of a combination of knives and files mainly using small files just to get your pieces nice and clean so I'm using model cement glue there but I do change over to super glue um, later on in the video. Super glue is probably better. Uh, I found the model cement glue took too long to dry for the pieces and this is quite a small model kit and I found it quite fiddly and so I found the super glue easier to use as it dried quicker and held the pieces in place better. So anyway, we're gluing in the main part of the body there, as you can see. We can put that to one side. I'm just kind of thinking things through inside my head. So we've got the female soldier there, who pilots the kind of mechanical robot machine. So just cutting off the flashing off her from her feet there, and we'll file that down also. Probably best to take your time with these models as they can get a little bit frustrating, although I'm probably speaking from my own perspective there. There's quite a lot of swearing during this video with pieces not fitting in how I wanted them to go. So now we're just looking at the pieces and sorting our legs from the arm. There's the gun which is held in the right hand of the mechanical robot. It's making sure that's filed down in place. And there's one of the legs. I think I actually broke that and had to repair it again with glue. So now we're assembling the legs. So you can see there I'm putting the foot onto one of the legs and gluing everything in place. Yeah, I did uh, break a few pieces but glued them back together. Had a few problems with this particular model kit. But I think it turned out okay in the end, although I think my model does lean back a little bit too much, but hey-ho, I'll be okay. 
So when you're doing this model, you want to kind of, before you glue your pieces in place, kind of put it together so you know how you want the pose of the figure, if that makes any sense. And uh, see how you want things to sit before you apply the glue. So there's my working photo there, as you can see, to see where all the pieces fit together. So as long as you have, as long as we got that reference, which was handy. So now just kind of situating the arms in place there, just to see what's what. But we will glue the legs in place first of all, once those legs are assembled. A little bit more filing there with mist bits of flashing. So now I got the super glue out. I kind of squirted everywhere, so I made a little pool and used the pool of super glue to glue our pieces together. I used a paintbrush as well to apply the super glue from our little pool. Super glue just at the top of the screen there. So what I want to do is glue both sides of your pieces to get a good glued fixing. And I secured the main body a little bit more with some more super glue just in the nooks and crannies and any excess super glue which you can see or any spillage of glue you can mop up with a cotton bud there. As you can see what I'm doing there. We've got the two legs there to fix onto the main part of the body. So fix those in place. Apply some more glue there. Bit of a fiddly job. See, I'm just putting the glue there in the sockets. Sockets for the legs. And on the actual leg itself. To get a nice, firm fixing. And putting on the armor. The armor for the knees or the legs. So applying the glue to both parts to make sure we get a good, neat fixing. So the leg came off. That happened quite a few times. I had to keep fixing and refixing. Before we do that, some more filing is required, just on the underbelly of the main part of the body, just to make sure that that front base plate fits in. A piece of armour, the armoured plate for the front. So now gluing that in place. where we are at the moment. Bloody fiddly job. 
I love the design of this uh, model kit though, that's one of the reasons I, well that's the, the only reason I bought it, so I thought it was a really good design. These garage kits, they're independent, so they're not like, made by any particular company. I think as people, just independent people, make these models and turn them into model kits for um, people to assemble. So I bought this particular kit from eBay. I think they pop up quite frequently. I think you probably get them on Amazon as well. So now we're assembling the arms. Yeah, it'd be nice to know who actually designed this model kit, because I could credit the person who made the kits in the video. If I find out, I'll mention the person in future videos, if I manage to find out who designed this particular kit. So on with the fiddly process of assembling the arms. So I'm sticking those in place on that arm there, the left arm. And the right hand side, the right hand holds that big gun. So before situating that, you want to kind of hold that in place to see how the arm and the gun are situated. So you want kind of like the, the gun, the butt of the gun to rest neatly on the ground level, if that makes any sense. There we are, that's that part in place, so we're moving forward. And fix that top. Oh, it's just seeing what I, how it does fix there. Putting the shoulder armor in place there, as you can see. Actually, I, don't, I think I ran out of batteries um, when I got around to fixing the, the lid for the robot. We're fixing a kind of lamp there on top of the, the robot and now we're putting in some hinges around that front area which is a very fiddly job because the pieces were really small hinges or clamps that's kind of like there to hold in the um, lid of the mechanical figure. So that's where we are at this stage. Fixing that arm in place again, probably for the fifth time. So this is obviously part one on how to assemble this particular model kit. And I'll do a part two where we'll do a paint job on this model. So that'll come up at some point. Not sure what colour scheme I'm going to use for this model. I was thinking maybe a yellow, uh, yellow for the for the mechanical figure, or maybe a red. I'm going to try and get some sort of like worn look. So like exposed metal um, coming through a red or yellow paint job. Yeah, just situating the things in place there. Got the lady inside holding up the lid of the figure. So yeah, like I said, missed out um, gluing down the lid, but it's pretty much straightforward. I decided to fix the model on top of a coffee pot lid, so that'll make it easier to maneuver and paint and I'll put some effects on that coffee lid maybe put some sand over it to give it some texture and all that sort of thing so that's where we're at the figure is assembled and we're ready for part two to paint the figure 
Hello, and here we are today on the second part of um, the mechanical figure. And in the first part, we obviously built the figure. And uh, in this video, we're going to be painting the video up to create the effect, as we saw in the photo at the beginning of this video. But before we start painting, I'm just applying some glue on our coffee lid, which is acting as a base. That was the only thing I could find at the time, as my figure wasn't standing up, so I decided to stick it to that base. What I'm doing is just putting down some PVA glue, and then just uh, sprinkling some sand over the top, just to give us a textured finish. Which we can then put some paint on to kind of create a kind of faux terrain. So, like I say, just put the PVA down and sprinkle the sand on top, let that dry, and then you can paint over the top. And I did use the hair dryer in places in this video just to speed up the drying process. With the paint and with the glue, as you can see in the video right now, as we go along. So once that's dry, we can get on with uh, painting the figure and the base. So, uh, I decided on a colour scheme of yellow for the uh, actual mechanical a robot part. And of course we've got our lady that is uh, the pilot of the robot. I'm just laying down some brown there just to soak in with our sand textured layer. And we can let that dry and pr proceed into painting the main figure. So like I say, I paint the main figure in a yellow. And by the way, I'm always harp on, harping on about priming your pieces before starting. And I decided to be lazy and skip a step and I didn't prime this model. Uh, which I should have done and you will see the reason why a little bit later on in the video. So, um, like always, if we make mistakes here, we'll put it up and show everybody else the problems other people might run into so when you do your own model you can avoid making the same mistakes sometimes it's not all plain sailing and we're all going to come up against uh, problems here and there that we can obviously learn from and gain our experience from it because I think I said in the first video this model here I built it and actually leans back a little bit too much so you can see in the first video we we'll talk about that. So uh, what we're doing here is I've got some cast iron paint there, a metallic paint, and I'm painting in the metal parts of the robot, or the mechanical parts I should say, because we want the whole item to look metal. So I just uh, put a coat of cast iron there over the gun and over the joints of the robot. And then a little bit later on, we'll apply a dry brush of silver metallic paint just to bring those joints out. But I leave the gun a black cast iron colour. So now I'm applying the yellow. So these are acrylic paints, which is what we mostly use for most things on the channel. Occasionally changing to different types of paint, but not very often. So just laying down our first coat and we will put one or two or two or three coats in places to solidify our colors. So now they're just looking at the female pilot of the robot mechanical figure. And I'm kind of making up the colors as I go. For some reason I had it in my head since building this particular garage kit that it was going to be yellow. I don't know why that is, but uh, I decided on them. So now we just uh, put some more coats, layers of paint to solidify the colours, like I say, make them look a bit more solid and less patchy. We don't want it, well, I don't want any patches in this particular project. Sometimes patches might be appropriate for whatever you're doing. 
It's not just paint the boots there. We're painting some. Uh, car I'm using some cast iron black again on the boots, and we'll go over the figure. Um, there's some details like a gun, and some other details. Helmet on the female figure. So I just put land down a coat there just to bring those details out. And we'll work on the figure throughout the video, along with working on the mechanical robot. So as you know, it's quite a bit of a low budget channel. So um, I sort of try my best with a with the camera to show you the details. And of course, this um, this model is quite small. So maybe one day when the channel gets a bit bigger and get more time to put into videos, then we can have a better production. I could do with an assistant to make videos because I'm doing them all on my own at the moment. And you know, I get. A, get some better cameras perhaps in the future when the channel grows so as you can see there back to the video just applying another coat of or um, yellow yellow and you'll see in a minute why I should have put the put a primer down because what the my plan is or was I was, did this I just did the voice over to the video now so they just put another coat on the base but uh, I put a wash of a dark brown over the yellow to kind of simulate some wearing but it actually took some of the yellow off now then if I would have put the primer on it would have stayed there and I would have got the effect that I was looking for so because of that we just had to dry brush a little bit bit of yellow on after that which I would have done anyway but I just had to put some more on just to create the effect that I was looking for so all was not lost, and we managed to salvage um, a respectable paint job from the slight deeds. Or so there, I am just putting it down like a purple colour for the female pilot, and just laying that down. We'll build up the layers as we go, so let that dry. And there she is so far. Just rested her up against one of the Natsuki casts that we made a while back, which was also featured in the competition video last month. So I hope to do some more uh, competition videos at some point. We're approaching a million views on the channel, so perhaps I'll do a celebratory competition then. And it's quite glad how the, well, very glad and pleased and happy how the Natsuki competition video turned out. So we had three winners. And I've had two videos back to sh uh, from two of the winners out of three to show their paint jobs and while they were painting the Netsukis from the competition, just waiting on for an, waiting for another winner. Uh, the other winner, the last winner, was in America, so the Netsuki might not have got there yet, but it should be there shortly. So back to the video and. Just dry, and dry brushing some more silver onto those joints. Or was this the first time around we're dry brushing the silver on? I know I was talking about it earlier. I can't remember where we're at. And also dry brushing some silver onto the yellow panels just to give a worn effect. So we're just dry brushing silver pretty much in, in patches all over the the robot, robot just to give that worn effect but we're not we're avoiding putting any silver onto the gun and we're just leaving the gun a cast iron color and there we are applying some more paint to the pilot of a purple jumpsuit so that's just like what was that that was cadmium red with ultramarine blue mixed together kind of just using the basic colors that come into the tubes with a little bit of mixing here and there for instance maybe to create a dark brown or mix a bit of burnt umber with black the yellow 
on the model was pretty much straight cadmium yellow. And we're using the metallic paints as well. So now I'm dry brushing, not dry brushing, um, I'm putting a wash of brown to kind of simulate some wearing, some rust. And we want that wash to flow into the recesses. But like I said earlier, I was, I was taking off some of the yellow paint as well, even after letting it dry for the night and curing. So what of uh, saved me from that problem was to, like I said earlier, is to uh, put some primer on the model. So, uh, so as you can see, it's just gone a brown color. So we're not getting that. The yellow is not shining through. And I'm using cotton buds there or Q-tips, as you can see, just to wipe wipe the uh, wash away from where we don't want it to be to reveal those highlights. Also, I tried using cotton wool as wiping to wipe off the paint, but I don't recommend doing that because you get little bits here, there and everywhere. So, you know, like the cotton wool that comes, just ordinary cotton wool, but a bit of rag and the cotton buds or Q-tips, they're ideal. So we just dry brush a little bit of yellow back on to where we wiped it off, which we didn't want to do. So you can probably see what's going on there. So if you make a mistake, you can always rectify things. Might be just a little bit of extra work, but it's fine. And I was just touching up everything. Building up layers of dry brushing. Going over the metallic parts again. Uh, I painted the inside of the cockpit a cast iron effect too, but I dulled it down with a black wash. Now back onto the figure. And we'll be applying a flesh tone to the face. We'll let that dry and we'll put a wash of brown over the top of the flesh tone also and wipe away the excess and touch up the flesh tone afterwards. That was really hard to paint because I cannot see the face. I mean, the detail on these models is incredible. And uh, you can see it more through the camera, although my camera here is not that great. It doesn't really pick up small details, but actually when I was painting that, that's way too small for me to see. It's amazing how they get that detail. I don't know whether they're hand sculpted or whether they're sort of computer generated or what, I don't know, but amazing detail. For me, now I'm getting older, could probably do with a model, to paint a model twice the size of what I'm painting here. I do like this model. I mean, that's the reason I bought it, of course. Very cool looking model. So now just continuing like touching up the bits and pieces, adding yellow, some more yellow to the model. Touching up the base. I darkened down the base a little bit, a darker brown. Um, and then we dry brush some highlights over the base. And there you can see I dropped the model and the lid of the, uh, the top of the main ro robot's fallen off. So we'll have to glue that back on in a moment. More touching up here and there. I think it's kind of come together. I think it looks like a kind of worn, almost realistic robot looking thing. Kind of cyberpunky, steampunky, I think. I watched a film the other day which was kind of uh, um, influenced by steampunk. I can't remember what it was called. It had Hugo Weaving in it. And it was like these strange ships, like they were operated by cogs and they go across the planet, like turfing up the planet. I'm sure when the video finishes, I'll remember the name of the film. It's bugging me now. So if anybody can remember that film, remind me in the comments. And if you've got any comments, just, you know, as always, leave them in the... Uh, description below any ideas about things and whatever it's all welcome so we're just going over things you can see the base there's sort of built up I put a dry brushed a bit of green and yellow 
and I do dry brush some copper over it as well just to kind of bring it out a little bit more and just touching up the main model with the same colors and just kind of refining it as we go using the hair dryer as well of course you might have seen that just then to speed up the drying between coats and there we are putting the copper down on the base And making look looking like the ground is mineral rich with resources perhaps I'm just talking out of my uh, backside there really but you never know so I'm gluing down the uh, top the hatch lid and taking a few pictures for Instagram that Instagram while uh, the glue dries so there we are job done job complete and I think that's turned out quite well. I hope you can see the details out there. Like I say, like for these smaller jobs, it would be handy to get a better camera. But I think you get the idea. I think that's turned out quite nice. And it's like it would, would have been nice to get some detail on that face, but I could not see that. Perhaps I need a new pair of glasses or something. But yeah, pretty happy with that. I kind of like the cyberpunk steampunk stuff and uh, I think there's a few of you out there that also like it too. So anyway, there we are. That's the end of this small series, part two. I'm going to say part one is building the model. I don't know if you can still get these models, but I bought this model from eBay. It came from China, so it took a little while to um, get here, but that was quite a while ago. Anyway, I'm waffling. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and over and out for now.